at right now? Um, everybody's doing good. Um, back in Philly, uh, just waiting this thing out, you know. Um, but everybody's good. Uh, I appreciate you asking. You know, um, what benefits, if any, Corey, um, can you take from kind of the virtual setup that we've had to this offseason thus far? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't an option, so uh, it, was, it wasn't like there's going to be any negatives. But um, I think, uh, you know, we've been going through this. So obviously, we've become the players and the coaches. Uh, we've become dang near experts on this Zoom thing. So um, the positives would be that we basically have gotten to the point or did get to the point early on in this that we operated as if we were in the building. I mean, I'm standing in front of the team, or the defense specifically, obviously. And um, I had a whiteboard on my wall, projector that uh, was shipped from uh, our guys in Detroit. And we operated as if I was standing in front of the defense with the whiteboard, um, could run the video, could draw, could present. So uh, I said this earlier this morning, um, if you would have asked me how I thought this was gonna go back in, the end of March draft, I would have been pretty skeptical. Um, but now being done with it and concluding uh, this morning, it's been the opposite. Uh, it's been an incredible experience. Um, obviously, I don't think any, we don't want to be on a Zoom call. I didn't want my first defensive introduction, uh, A, to myself, and then the philosophy to defense and what we're trying to do here being on a Zoom call. But now that we're done, it's been uh, it's been a very very positive uh, experience, and I feel really really good at where we're at um, now that we're finished with the uh, with the off season. Mike Rostein. Hey Corey, how are you? Mike. Um, you were one of the coaches that signed the Players Coalition letter last week to end qualified immunity. I was just wondering if you could walk me through your decision to support that and and kind of maybe where you stand with that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there was a decision. Um, obviously, we got it from the league, and then it was forwarded to us as coaches. Um, and if I'm going to support the players. I'm going to support the players, and that's is it. Ben Raven. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Appreciate the time hey. on. Yes. I know you haven't been on the field or anything like that, but, you know, what's your takeaway and just your take on Jeff Okuda, obviously third overall pick, kind of pegged for a big role we're thinking here. What's your takeaway on the kid so far? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> obviously going through the draft process, he was, he was on the list. Um, fortunate that we got him. Um, and I've been nothing but impressed with him since day one. Um, you know, with this Zoom thing, you know, it's, uh, I've spent a lot a lot of time uh, with Jeff. Um, I think the people in Detroit and Lions fans uh, are gonna really, really like him, not only as a player, but as a person. Um, Jeff is driven uh, like few men I've been around in this profession. And uh, I know that, and I can tell that, albeit a Zoom call. I mean, the guy, he's nonstop. I mean, to the point where it's like, Jeff, can we talk about something like, can we, can we not talk about football for like five minutes? Can we talk about something else? Like, do you do anything else? Like, what are you doing? Um, that's how he's wired. Uh, and I, I look forward to obviously getting him out there and we'll see what it looks like when he's on the grass. Cause like you said, we haven't been on the field yet. So we'll make that decision down the road. But after the last three months, after we had the opportunity to draft him, it's been nothing but press impressive and, um, I'm super excited for him and his future. Um, there's no depth chart set yet. We haven't practiced yet. So we'll see what that looks like when we get back. But as far as right now, um, it's been very good. Chris Burke. Hey, Corey, thanks for the time. Yes, sir. Uh, just sort of following up on a couple of things you said there. I, I'm sure it's hard to get a feel for it because we don't know what camp's going to look like or the preseason's going to look like. but do you have a sense for if you have to simplify anything or kind of scale down the playbook or anything that, you know, the timing of things are just off this off season? Do you, do you know where you're at yet? Yeah, I would say this, uh, a majority of the, the entire playbook is not in. Uh, we're not even, I wasn't even focused on trying to get the entire thing in just 
I mean, the focus was basically to introduce the stuff that um, are our core values on defense and just start introducing the stuff so that they could hear it. Um, we're going to redo it when we get back from training camp, just like we do every single year. Um, so we'll see how that goes when we get back. But I'm I'm pleased with where it went. Um, and uh, we'll see what it looks like when we get on the field. But very, very pleased with where we're at right now and getting all that stuff in. If that answers the question. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yep. Justin Rose. Hey, Corey, uh, not sure how, how fair this question is, but, you know, because you haven't been on the field, but are you at where you think you would have been if everything would have been in a normal year behind or ahead of schedule? I mean, how have you guys had to adapt to get to where you are now? Are you talking about installation wise? I'm sorry, what? Are you talking about like as far as installation? Of the yeah, defense? installation and like your your comfortability with everybody's understanding of what you guys are, are implementing and what you guys are asking them to do. Um, I would say I'm very comfortable with where everybody's at. Um, the initial question as far as do you think I'm ahead or are we behind um, from a normal situation? I would say we're right. It's as close to normal as we could be. Um, we won't really, I guess I won't be able to judge that until we get on the field and find out where the players are at as far as their mental and their recall once the we start running around. But as far as the information going in, no different. I think we're exactly the same. Let's go Woody next. Uh, thanks a lot, Coach. I appreciate you coming out. I think Woody? along the same lines as as what we've heard before, was it hard to trust the virtual system when you first started it? Because normally uh, when you talk to guys, it's face to face. When you see them, it's repetition, the normal things that you look for in football. But now with it being virtual, was it hard to trust this thing at the start? Uh, I don't know about I don't know if it if I would say trust. Um, I would say just probably a little uncomfortable until we kind of got into the flow and I got through a couple presentations. Um, but once I got up to the point where like I could put the iPad on top of three boxes and it was level with the screen that was on my wall. And then we got to the point where like, all right, just hit the, hit the button and then the, the video would pop up. But once I think we got into, into the, once I got into the groove, we all got into a groove. It was no different than being in the meeting room. Minus obviously we're not in it. That's obviously the biggest difference. But as far as a presentation and giving information, and then what do you, I could just turn around and be like, hey, do you have that? Do you have a question? I could answer, you could quiz them. You could, I mean, it's the same exact situation minus we're not in the room. So it ended up being very, very, very positive. I guess that faith feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's a fact. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, coach. Yes, sir. Back to Tim. Hey, Corey, you, you talked about there being no depth chart, obviously, at, at this point. Um, but you guys did uh, do a lot of maneuvering around at the linebacker position. You added some guys. Obviously, yep. uh, you got some guys like Tavai, who's going into his second year. Normally, you see a big jump in, in those guys' production. Is that one position group you're looking forward to seeing kind of how it plays out and, and um, you know, how that competition goes? Uh, I, would, I would agree with that. Um, I would also say if you look at the additions at all three levels from the front to the linebackers to the secondary, um, I'm excited about all of it. Um, the linebacker group, obviously, is we've got some new faces in there um, and the guys that we have already have on the roster. Um, that's going to be fun to watch. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm excited about watching the entire thing, all three groups, and see how it, it comes together. Um, gotten to know these guys really, really well uh, through these calls and through these discussions. Um, so I, I can't wait to get back and watch it go down. We'll see what happens. Go Nick Baumgartner. Hey, Corey, thanks for doing this. Um, so, I, I mean, obviously you've been able to watch, you know, the, the team from last year. You haven't been able to get on the field, but in, you mentioned earlier your core values on defense uh, and with with a group that you do have a lot of young pieces both coming in and played last season, I, I wonder without giving away the full plan, you know, maybe what are some of those core values and, and maybe where do you, what's your sort of vision along with that? Yeah, I wouldn't get into any specifics on that. Um, as you know, you knew that before you asked the question. Um, 
when we uh, when I say core values, there's there's certain things that we know we're going to do. Um, you guys know that we're a multiple front already. We've got some. We do a couple different things. Um, we got a couple different personnel packages that we're talking about, uh, but the core stuff talking about really the front and the coverages that we feel are going to be part of it. A lot of it being the stuff that we've done that they've done with Matt, obviously in the New England system and the stuff that he brought with. And then some of the stuff that we're me and Matt are trying to like bring together and bring in um, specifically, obviously I'm not going to talk about that, but I mean, we have a couple of things that we like, Hey, this is what we're going to be about. Uh, for sure. We're going to do a bunch of different stuff, but um, we'll see how that goes down when we get there. Carlos. Hey, Corey, uh, you mentioned Jeff Okuda and how he's, uh, you know, sounds like he's 100% football all the time. Uh, do you worry about burnout and having to maybe manage him a little bit? You know, the rookie wall first year, you know, it's really tough for rookies coming off the whole combine, that whole thing. Um, do you have to manage that? And the other question uh, dovetailing with that is, does he have any interest outside of football? Uh, I'll leave his interests outside of football alone. I'll let him tell you what those are. Um, he's an incredible, he's an incredible kid. Excuse me. It's my dog in the background. Oh. Um, am I worried about the kid getting burnt out? No, no, I'm not, not whatsoever. Now that rookie wall, when you, heat, when you hit week, week 10 or week 11, that's a different ball game. But as far as mentally, um, I'm not worried about him getting uh, burnt out at all. No. John Neo. Yeah. Hey, Corey, i um, just curious when we do get around to playing games in the fall, um, who's, what, what's the play calling? Have you guys figured that out yet? Who's, who's the plays? And then separate from that ideal situation come training camp, when an extended training camp, what kind of benefit would that be to, just for you as coaches? Uh, play calling, we'll figure that out when we get to the season. I'll leave it at that. Um, and then the extended training camp. Uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I, this is just me personally. You know, the, the biggest thing about OTAs, obviously you're talking about reps for all the players. Um, and then you're really talking about all the individual technique work that you get to spend time on. And for me, that's the biggest loss from – not being on the field right now is just the technique work, how to get in a stance, how to get out of a stance, defeating blocks, um, playing man-to-man -man press coverage. Um, so the extended training camp, if it does go that way, I mean, that would be on Matt to basically detail that out logistically and how we're going to attack that if it goes longer, if we get more time. I don't know how that's going to look yet. But if you're asking for a positive, that would be the first reaction for me, would be the ability to still have some time and get extra work in from each technique by position, if that makes sense. Because that's really, for me, that's being a position coach, the OTA phase, and especially phase two and phase three, was all about detailing and becoming a master at your craft and becoming an expert at backpedal and braking or lining up as a three technique and then stepping with a six inch step, locking out, punching, hand placement. So we're, we missed that part of it. Um, so that would be my quick reaction to that, if that makes sense. Yeah, thanks. You got it. We'll have two more questions. Uh, Tim, followed by Rostein. Corey, obviously, you know, you haven't seen Nick Williams or, or Danny Shelton on the field together, but I'm assuming you were part of the evaluation process and in, in going out and acquiring those guys and how they fit to you and Matt's defense. I'm just curious how maybe those two guys, a little bit different styles, but how they might complement each other and why you guys thought they were, you know, great fits for, for what you guys do on defense on the interior there. Yeah, I mean, you guys, I'm assuming you guys have watched them play um, over the last few years and the evaluation part first of all, starts with just their, their tape and their film. Um, and they're both been productive. Um, I agree with you. They both kind of have a different skill set. Um, but we'll plug those guys in and we'll get a feel for once we get them all back. And we, well, we got a, we got a, a really nice depth chart there at the, uh, 
um, at the uh, at that position, and we'll just kind of mix and match, and we'll watch those two guys work. We'll find out where they're most comfortable, what the best combination is, and then we'll settle on that once we get closer to uh, the start of the season. Excited to have both of them um, in that room. Great fit from personality wise, character wise. They're just they're great guys first and foremost, and then obviously they've got a great skill set too. So. Um, expecting great things out of both of them. Hey, last question, Mike. Yeah, Corey, it's kind of a two-part question just to, to start there. Is that first, how comfortable are you coming back to work considering everything with COVID and, you know, there are some states that are spiking now, even though Michigan is not. And secondly, how do you start to even mentally plan for how you can handle if, three defensive backs maybe all end up having COVID and can't play for two weeks. Like, do you as a coaching staff start talking about those things now? Yeah. Um, as far as coming back, um, may, I mean, I, no, I would say I'm, I don't really have any anxiety for coming back. I do. I trust when that process, when that happens, that the building's going to be set up, the testing, all of that. I mean, that, that question, and I, I can't even answer that, how that's going to look. Um, but I do, tr I trust that everybody in, uh, Allen park is going to have that thing set up and we'll do the protocol, whatever the protocol is going to be with all the testing and the time frame and how that goes. So I'm not, I'm not worried about that. The second question, um, that yeah, obviously that's, that would be a concern and, uh, I don't really have the answer for that. Uh, I'm not a medical expert, um, Let's just hope, and uh, we're and we're all hoping and praying that um, that does not happen. Um, and then if it does, and we end up in that situation, then we're going to have to just like everybody else on this planet is doing, deal with it in the necessary ways, and hopefully we can uh, make it through that. Thanks, Corey. Okay. Thanks, Corey. It. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for uh, the time, Corey. Appreciate it. We'll have Coach Bell.